What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on a Friday. If you're anywhere in the United States right now, it's absolutely freezing, but we have some really good stuff to go ahead and jump into regarding Eagles and Cowboys, including the Dallas Cowboys. They're not really saying this out loud. They've had a big-time sickness going through the organization right now in terms of the players, whether it's a stomach bug, whether it's the flu, whether it's COVID, who knows? But a lot of them are getting sick, including Micah Parsons. We're going to jump into that first. And then look at former Eagles running back LaShawn McCoy ripping into Dak Prescott this week. This is good stuff. Let's start, though, with this whole stomach bug situation by looking at the Bleeding Green Nation final injury report on your screen. No real shocker here in terms of Philadelphia. They're pretty darn healthy. I mean, the one question mark really is going to be Zach Paschal, who's questionable with a concussion for tomorrow's afternoon matchup. But Hertz is out. We knew that. Terry Jackson's out with the knee. And everybody else is pretty much good to go. The injury report was extremely small. As you see, Zach Paschal, again, just the one player who... Um, is any sort of questionable with that sort of concussion. I saw a lot of people asking about C.J. Gardner-Johnson really quickly. He's eligible to return next week against the Saints from that four-game stint on IR. Doesn't mean he will. We don't know yet. I think next week you need to be subscribed for that update, but that'll come next week. And so no C.J. this weekend, um, but possibly next week as we have mentioned that before. Okay, Dallas Cowboys injury report. It's very interesting. First off, Leighton Vander Esch remains out with a neck. Now, he is officially not going to play in this one as he is a big-time blow to the middle of that Cowboy defense. That kind of happened last week against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Had him in a lingering injury as well. Everything I have read about it, but looks like no Leighton Vander Esch tomorrow. That's a big deal for Philadelphia, a big deal for Dallas as well. Dorrance Armstrong, who's second on the Cowboys in sacks, is questionable. He's been limited this week, but he should be able to go ahead and suit up with that knee injury. And then Jake Ferguson, their tight end, is in concussion protocol as well. He was limited all week. He's their number two, um, but pretty much should be good to go. Um, in terms of other players, there's really aren't any sort of other big terms injuries that are happening, but you do notice this Micah Parsons illness thing in terms of the questionable report from the Dallas Cowboys. Now, you just glance over that and say, oh, illness, not a big deal. But then you go over here. How about this Jane Slater tweet, who's one of the, you know, insiders who covers the Dallas Cowboys. She says, quote, hashtag head coach Mike McCarthy says Micah Parsons will miss practice again today. This is on the 21st. As illness continues to move through the locker room last few weeks, end quote. Now, again, you can glance over that because a lot of players have illnesses and a lot of teams, you know, that's sick, and then they get their IVs and they're good to go ahead and play. But you remember what happened to A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown had an illness. He had a stomach bug a couple of weeks ago. And sure enough, he was throwing up a ton leading into that game and was not himself. Now, he did catch a touchdown pass, but really was not himself a couple of weeks ago. There's a very real case that Micah Parsons might not be 100% for this game on Saturday. Now, all speculation. I could just be stirring the pot for something that might not even be a big deal. But if an illness is going through the Cowboy locker room, they would never tell you how serious it actually is because they don't want to admit that players are throwing up or players are, you know, having severe fatigue or whatever. But keep an eye on this, especially if Dallas starts slow. Because early on in these big football games, the heart rate is really good. Going, the adrenaline's pumping really hard, and you get winded way earlier if you aren't 100%. If Parsons struggles, then you might make this as an excuse, which we're not going to give him any sort of excuses because he ripped Jalen Hurts a couple of weeks ago, but still, it's worth noting an illness has been going through the Cowboys. <coughs> Excuse me, I love it. It was too, apparently. Uh, Elizabeth has been going through the Dallas Cowboys locker room, and it could be a factor for Saturday's game, uh, <coughs> excuse me, again, coming up tomorrow. All right, I want to go ahead and get into LaShawn McCoy's um, pretty funny comments on Dak Prescott that have really triggered a bunch of people in the national media, including former NFL players. Tony Dungy spoke out about it. Um, who was it as well? Is Kurt Warner said something about LaShawn McCoy's co comments. We'll show you that there in just one second. First, though, if you guys want to join this channel, the holiday season, a couple of you guys, you'll notice in the comments section, have the little Eagles loyalty badges, they call them, next to their name, the yellow one. You can go ahead and join the channel like a lot of other shows have uh, by hitting the join button down below and picking a monthly level. If you guys want to jump into this, zero pressure, something that I've made and that a lot of people were asking about. So if you guys are wondering where you get the loyalty badges next to your name in the live chat and in the comments section, hit the join button down below, and that's how you do it. All right, LaShawn McCoy, he's trashing Dak Prescott. This is fun stuff, but, you know, listen, it's all fun and games. Now, uh, we in Eagle Land, when you trash Jalen Hurts, we get upset. You know, that, that's fine. I'm not saying that, that people are upset or, or not have no reason to be upset at Dak or for LaShawn McCoy ripping Dak Prescott, but it is fun to go ahead and see Dak get, you know, trashed a little bit by Shady, who very much is an Eagle for life. I mean, I know we shipped him away, or Chip Kelly shipped him away for Kiko Alonso back in the old Bills days. That was a whole different story. But it is funny to watch people get upset about what LaShawn McCoy had to say on uh, his Fox Sports 1 show. You see it on your screen right now. Quote, Dak is ass. Can I say that on TV? Because he is ass ass. This is the second game he's just lost by throwing picks. He threw two picks in the Packers, had a 14-point lead, lost. Throw up 17 against the Jaguars, 17 and lost. Dak has the easiest job in football. 
Pixie's throwing. He's not even trying to throw the ball through the needle or or, or, uh, or small little windows, McCoy said. They're like easy passes. They run the ball well. What else can you do? I'm paying you $160 million. That's how you play? End quote. Yeah, he got a lot of criticism on social media. I mean, all over social media was ripping him here. But let's be real. Now, saying Dak Prescott is ass on national TV, I mean, come on. It's not the most professional thing that you can do. It's not really, you know, a, a first a Fox Sports 1 TV show analyst's job to call a player ass or not. But he's not wrong, right? Dak has been throwing really ugly interceptions. The two against the Green Bay Packers were really bad. One of the two against the Jaguars were terrible. He's blowing a 14-point lead. He's blowing a 17-point lead. And what he says at the end is true. They run the ball well. What else can you do? They should be just able to run the football, and then Dak makes a couple of decent throws, nothing crazy, and they win football games. That's been the story of the Dallas Cowboys for a very, very long time. Yeah, Dak, for whatever reason, whether he's trying to, you know, earn his $160 million contract, his $40 plus million a year, or prove that he's still an elite quarterback or whatever it is, he's forcing throws, and it has really hurt the Dallas Cowboys over the past couple of weeks. Now, Dak is a good player. I'm not saying Dak is ass. He's a solid quarterback. He's fine. Now, he's not great. I think Jalen Hurts is having a much higher career trajectory right now. I think Dak has hit that career high and is just kind of hovering, you know, as a mediocre quarterback. I had RJ Ochoa, editor of Blogging the Boys on my show a couple of days ago on an interview you guys should watch, by the way. It's really good. Um, and he said Dak's a top five to eight quarterback. I don't see him top five to eight. I see Dak, you know, 10 to 12. Still really good. It's fine. But it is funny to see uh, LaShawn McCoy rip him a little bit. And all the cowboy hate or cowboy lovers out there get really offended because, honestly, when you actually read the comments, it's not that big a deal. Okay, I want to move over here quickly to one final story before we get into the NFL uh, games of the weekend, our na NFL national story here in the Thomas Mott Show. Again, apologize for the location. New location tomorrow. We're going to you know, girlfriend's parents' house, my parents' house, all over the place. This is the best lighting I could find in the house, so just bear with me on that. Uh, just close your eyes and listen if you're watching this one on uh, YouTube. How about this story here? Eagles employees send Doug Peterson Jaguars cheesesteaks for a win over the Cowboys. And this comes from uh, John Shipley of the Raiders, or sorry, the Jaguars report, uh, who spoke uh, with the Jackson-based Philly finest restaurant over Jeff Harris about the transaction. Quote, so on Tuesday, we answered the phone uh, that, by some, that by somebody saying they were from the organization, want to send, want to buy Doug Peterson lunch for being the Cowboys, so they're being the Cowboys. They love Doug Peterson. They love him in Philly, so they want to send him the taste of Philadelphia. And apparently, they sent him a bunch of cheesesteaks, over 25 large fries, 35 cheesesteaks, to the Jags head coach and his staff on Sunday for beating the Dallas Cowboys. Quick story, fun story. How about Philadelphia? Very appreciative for making this game on Saturday between Eagles and the Cowboys. Very obsolete because the Jaguars beat them last week, and Dallas can win and really doesn't hurt uh, Philadelphia. All right, final story here quickly. Thumbs up for, you know, giving Doug Peterson cheesesteaks, by the way. That's some really good stuff. Okay, here are your games happening tomorrow. A lot more games on Saturday instead of Sunday. Three on Sunday. The full slate, the rest on Saturday. A couple of ones that matter, a couple of ones that don't. Bills, Bears, doesn't matter, right? In terms of the NFL national story, Bills trying to stay ahead and, uh, you know, get back the number one overall seed or keep the number one overall seed. I should say Bears, irrelevant. They're trying to lose, essentially. We'll see what happens with Justin Fields. But Buffalo on the road, heavy favorites. It's going to be freezing in not only this game, but every single game, essentially, on Sunday that's not in a dome. So Bills and Bears, they're used to it. Saints-Browns, you got to root for the Browns if you're an Eagle fan. Goodness gracious, the Saints winning last week was terrible. Again, 11 degrees on Saturday at First Energy Stadium. This is a nothing burger of a game. The Browns technically are, you know, not eliminated from the playoffs, but they pretty much are uh, irrelevant. Texans-Titans. The Titans are only three-point favorites at home against the uh, Texans, who have been really dangerous the past couple of weeks. Think about, you know, almost beating the Cowboys. They almost beat the Chiefs. The Titans lose this game. And Malik Willis is going to be your starter in this one because of the ankle injury to um, to Ryan Tannehill. The Titans season is over. I think from, they might fire Vrabel at the end of this year because of how bad they've been. Seahawks-Chiefs is interesting in terms of what the Chiefs can do against Seattle. Seattle losing here would be a devastating blow to their wild card chances. This kind of gives um, you know the Lions a lot of life in terms of potentially being the number seven seed. So if you like the Lions, you root for them. Uh, you root for the Seahawks to lose to the Chiefs. Giants-Vikings is interesting because the Giants need to win after they had a nice win last week against the Washington Commanders. This keeps them in the sixth seed if they were to win this football game. What do the Vikings look like? Because the Vikings look terrible for, you know, three and a half quarters last week, and then they come back and have the greatest comeback in NFL history. So an interesting bounce-back game there. You would think Minnesota can win this one easily, but the Giants need it in order to stay alive in the playoff run. Bengals-Patriots is not a big factor for anyone in terms of the Bengals trying to go ahead and get into the playoffs. They're pretty much there. They win. They continue to hold on to their division, but not a big game in terms of, like, you know, the one seed because it doesn't look, look like the Bengals are going to get it. Lions-Panthers is big for the Lions because they're trying to win, what is it, their seventh in a row? Seven out of the last eight? Some crazy number like that. Eight and seven would put them as the seventh seed, and if the Commanders lose to the 49ers, then that bumps them up again to the seventh seed. Ravens-Falcons is a snooze fest here. Atlanta will go ahead. 
and trot out their rookie quarterback, Desmond Ritter, for a second straight week. He was really bad last week in his first game ever, but in a you know, third-round third, third draft pick. Not a big NFL guy in terms of uh, you know projection, at least, coming into the NFL. Uh, we'll see what he does against Tyler Huntley, getting another start for the injured Lamar Jackson. Uh, Commanders and 49ers is a good afternoon game. It does matter big time in terms of the number one, I should say the number two overall seed. You kind of want to root for the Commanders in this one, because if the 49ers lose one more game, then there really isn't any sort of chance that they're going to go ahead and be the one seed. Now, again, if Philadelphia wins one of their final three, then they are the one seed. So not a big factor if the 49ers win or lose, but I like to see the 49ers look a little bit human in this one. So I'm actually going to pull for the commanders to go ahead uh, and hit Brock Purdy around a little bit. Good chance for Chase Young to play in his first game uh, all year. Eagles-Cowboys, Dallas four-and-a-half-point favorites. That's come down from six at one point, obviously because of the gardner Minshew situation. I like Gardner, baby. I think Gardner's going to do really well. I think he's going to play well and win that game. And then you have Raiders and Steelers to do, go ahead and cap out the Saturday night slate. Not a very good one. Uh, Packers-Dolphins, interesting on Sunday. Broncos-Rams, not interesting. Bucks-Cardinals, a total snooze fest. So not a lot of big games coming up this weekend, the biggest of which is Eagles and Cowboys. And you know what? I'm going to do a pregame show if we get enough likes on this show and enough of you guys comment saying you want a pregame show. I know it's Christmas Eve. But it's in the afternoon, and my Christmas Eve events don't start till the evening. And so I could hop on and do like an hour pregame show if you guys want me to. If you do, let me know down below right now in the comment section. Give me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, and if people say they want it, then I'll go ahead and do it. So we will see. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Again, last time with this terrible lighting and the terrible camera angle. Just bear with me. Come on, I'm on the road. Give me guys shows. Uh, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow, hopefully in a pregame. Go Birds, Minchu Mania, mustache it up. Have a good time with your friends and family. Stay warm out there. Thomas Mott, Thomas Mott Show.